If you're thinking about buying your first camera drone, but don't know where to start, this video is for you. Welcome to Ready, Set, Drone, a channel dedicated to creating content about drones and other RC hobbies. This video is designed to give you an overview of the different consumer drones that DJI makes and help you pick the one that is right for you. Now to be clear, I know that these are not the only drones available on the market today. There are hundreds of companies making thousands of different drones, racing drones, freestyle drones, industrial drones, and other camera drones. But I've selected these models because they have all proven to be great. Each one is reliable, easy to fly, and takes amazing aerial images. I encourage you to watch this video and then do some research for yourself. You'll find that the overwhelming majority of people who already own each of these drones love them and are using them in amazing and creative ways. But enough with the introduction, let's get down to it. Today we're going to be looking at the DJI Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air, the Mavic 2, both the Pro and the Zoom models, and the Phantom 4 Pro version 2. Each of these drones fills a need in the aerial photography and videography space. None of these drones are what I'd call toy grade. They are all at a minimum hobby grade, and in the case of the Mavic 2 and the Phantom series, they're commonly used by professionals for industrial and cinematic projects. Let's start with the Mavic Mini, which is designed to be an entry-level drone. If you've never flown a drone before and want to get one that can take high-quality photos and video for personal use and social media, the Mavic Mini is perfect. It's the lowest cost of the group, and it's the lightest, coming in at 249 grams with the battery. That means in the U.S. that you don't have to register it with the FAA. It does have a three-axis mechanical gimbal for smooth footage. It flies up to 30 minutes on a single battery, a single charge, and it has lots of different flight modes, including position, cine smooth, and sport. It doesn't have as many quick shots as the other drones we're gonna talk about today, but the ones it does have are extremely easy to use. It's so portable too. The entire kit fits in a small lightweight case, including batteries, the remote, and the charger, so it's very easy to throw into a backpack and take with you wherever you go. And it's also really quiet, which I like because if you're flying somewhere uh, where noise is an issue, this one's super quiet and doesn't really create uh, the noise that some of the others do. It flies well indoors and includes prop guards so that you can fly it indoors safely. Now this one uses the DJI Fly app, which is a little different than the other apps. It's designed to be very easy for editing and social sharing. So if you've never edited video before, you can actually use the DJI Fly app to create videos using templates that are built into it. It's got some fun accessories like a charger that looks like a space age uh, sci-fi kind of thing. It has a little uh, TV screen that sits on top of it and lights up with a message that you can send around. It's got a little uh, adapter so you can put a uh, Lego or toy character on top of it and fly around. They've designed it really to be for not only flying, but for having fun and, and uh, making it your own through customization with custom skins and such that you can make. So now because it is smaller, lighter weight, and costs less than the other drones, you do give up a few things. First of all, you don't get 4K video. It has 2.7K video, which is in between 4K and 1080. Most content you're viewing online these days on social media sites is 1080 anyway. So 2.7 is a little bit future-proof in that if you shoot in 2.7, you're gonna be able to uh, down compress it to 1080 for social sharing. But if you play it on a 4K TV, it's gonna look pretty good. But it's not true 4K, so that's one thing that you give up. Also, this thing only has a downward sensor, meaning that it can detect as it's landing uh, where it's going. It can also use that sensor to fly indoors so that it doesn't have to have satellites in order to fly uh, accurately and hold in place, but it doesn't have all the anti-collision sensors that the other drones have. One of the things I really like about the Mavic Mini is how cute and unintimidating it is. This is truly a drone that anyone can learn to fly and a drone made to capture and share unique aerial perspectives of your life, especially on social media. Next is the Mavic Air, which is designed for consumers who are looking for a high amount of portability but want a 4K camera and a few more features than the Mavic Mini offers. It costs more than the Mavic Mini, but less than the Mavic 2. It weighs 430 grams with the battery, which means at least in the US you do need to register it with the FAA. It has a three-axis mechanical gimbal for very smooth footage, a flight time of up to 21 minutes, and it uses the DJI Go 4 app. 
Now the DJI GO 4 app is commonly used among many of their newer drones, with the exception of the Mavic Mini, and it has a lot of features that the DJI Fly app does not have. That's a good and bad thing. It means it's a little more complicated to learn, but it means you can do more with it. So like the Mavic Mini, you can put this thing into position mode, which is what you'll fly it in most of the time with GPS lock, tripod mode for really slow, smooth flying and shooting, uh, and then sport mode for just zipping around really quickly. It has all of the built-in quick shots that the Mavic Mini has, plus others, including uh, Asteroid, which I think is really cool. It has the ability to track subjects using uh, Active Track, which the Mavic Mini doesn't have, and it has more sensors than the Mavic Mini, forward, backward, and downward sensors. The forward and backward are obstacle avoidance, and downward helps it hold position inside when it doesn't have satellites, and also helps it land safely. Now, one of the really unique things about the Mavic Air is A-Pass. A-Pass uses obstacle sensors to automatically fly around obstacles. It can basically avoid obstacles while still finding the right path and moving forward. So if you turn on A-Pass and you fly through, say, some trees or just around some furniture or something like that, or even into toward a building, instead of it stopping and just holding there because it senses it, it will find a way to go around it, which is really cool. Now, while it's a little bit bigger and heavier than the Mavic Mini, it is still extremely portable and extremely easy to take with you. It has 4K video at 30 frames per second, 2.7K video at 60 frames per second, and 1080 video at 120 frames per second, so that means you can do slow motion with it. It has eight gigabytes of storage built in, in addition to the SD card. So if you're flying with it and you run out of space on your card or you forget your card, you've got eight gigs built into it that you can record to. So I've had my Mavic Air for a while, and it is my go-to drone when I want something really portable, if I want to shoot 4K video, and something that's rugged. I have crashed this thing a number of times, and aside from a few broken props, it's held up quite well. It's the perfect drone for consumers who want to take aerial footage of their outdoor adventures. So the next step up in the DJI family of drones is the Mavic 2. Because of their portability, relatively low cost, high quality cameras, and amazing feature set, the Mavic 2 series plays well in both the hobbyist and professional drone worlds. So the Mavic 2 comes in two different models, the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. They both weigh around 900 grams with the battery. So the Pro features a 20 megapixel Hasselblad camera with a one inch sensor, while the Zoom features a one over 2.3 inch 12 megapixel sensor. But the big thing on the Zoom is it has a 24 millimeter to 48 millimeter optical zoom. They both do 4K video and they both can fly up to 31 minutes. Now, of course that's theoretical, but you are gonna get in the high 20s most of the time. And that is definitely the longest of all the drones in this video. Because of their redesigned propellers and ESCs, they are very quiet to fly, almost as quiet as the Mavic Mini. And they both use the DJI GO 4 app, which like I said, once you've started flying with DJI and you get to know the DJI GO 4 app, there's a lot you can do with it. And it's nice that you can use the same app across multiple drones. They do feature the intelligent flight modes that I talked about earlier, as well as the same quick shots that I talked about on the Mavic Air, things like Asteroid and Droney and uh, Helix. But these do something really, really cool that the others can't do, and that is hyperlapse. Now, hyperlapse is when they fly very slowly from position A to position B, let's say it's a couple of hundred meters, and as they fly, they take an image every two seconds, and then they stitch it all together into what looks like a time lapse, a moving time lapse from the sky. And hyperlapse is one of my absolute favorite features on any drone anywhere. Now with the Mavic 2 Zoom, you can do a thing called Dolly Zoom, where you can move away from or towards a subject and zoom the opposite direction, and it makes this really kind of wild, crazy uh, looking effect where you're moving towards something, but everything's getting wider at the same time. And then it has Hyperlight, which allows you to shoot in low light and really enhances low light shooting without creating a lot of noise in the images. They are also amazing at tracking. They can both do active track and can track just about anything uh, that is reasonably sized and reasonably distanced and not going too fast. But active track is something that is not available on the Mavic Mini, but is available on the higher end drones like these. They have omnidirectional sensors, meaning that they go forward, backward, up, down, left, right. Some of the sensors are optical, like cameras, and some of them are infrared, but generally you're not gonna run into something with this unless you really try to. 
The Mavic 2 features eight gigabytes of internal storage, just like the Mavic Air, which is great when you've run out of space or you've forgotten your card. And they both use OcuSync 2 for clear video transmission at longer range. So one of the big differentiators when you get to this level of drone is OcuSync 2.0. It gives you extremely clear video transmission at a really long range, probably longer than you should be flying because you should keep these in visual line of sight at all times. But OcuSync 2 also enables you to work wirelessly with the DJI goggles, which if you haven't tried the DJI goggles, they're quite an experience and you can literally just pair these with the goggles and they'll work without any wires, which is really cool. In addition, these both work with the DJI Smart Controller. Now, I've had the Smart Controller for a little over a year, and I have to say it's very hard to go back to a normal controller once you've used it. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know I have a lot of drones, and of the camera drones that I own, the Mavic 2 is the one that I use the most often. It's a great mix of excellent looking video and photography, plus portability, plus a lot of cool features that aren't available on the lower end drones, but you still have the portability of the small form factor. So for me, the Mavic 2 is a great choice if you wanna get into doing aerial photography and video. And finally, coming in at the high end of these camera drones is the Phantom 4 Pro version 2. This drone is the latest and most advanced iteration of the DJI Phantom series, and the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 is all about high quality image capture. It's the biggest and heaviest of these drones I've shown you today, coming in at 1,375 grams, and it has an advertised flight time of 30 minutes, now it's not as quiet as the Mavic 2 or the Mavic Mini, but it is quieter than previous Phantom models due to these little winglets that they've put onto the propellers. Um, much like airplanes now have the winglets that go up on the end of their wings, like commercial airliners, these have these little winglets which help, help reduce the noise. So the really big differentiator in this drone is the camera, which features a one inch CMOS sensor that can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second in video and then do 20 megapixel photos. And if you want to take it up another level, you can shoot in Cinema 4K, which is 4,096 pixels by 2160 at 100 megabits per second, which is an insane amount of data at that big of a size. It also supports H.264 and H.265 compression, which makes it kind of future-proof. In 1080 HD, it can shoot 120 frames per second for slow motion, and it uses a mechanical shutter, which is much better for fast-moving objects or while flying the thing really fast, you're gonna get a clearer picture uh, with a mechanical shutter than you will with the electronic shutter. It has a photo burst mode that can take 20 megapixel photos, 14 in one second. That means that if you're trying to capture something that's happening really quickly and you want a still of it, you can use that burst mode and you'll get 14 photos to choose from in that one second of time, which is really cool. Uh, the one inch sensor also means that it's better in low light than smaller sensors. So if you're shooting in the evening, uh, this is gonna be a better choice and give you a better clarity in your imagery. It does use OcuSync 2.0. Now, older Phantoms used a technology called LightBridge. Uh, they have now put OcuSync 2.0 into the Phantom uh, 4 version 2. And so that is uh, amazing because all the benefits that come with OcuSync, including the ability to work with the DJI goggles. It has up to an eight kilometer range as far as being able to fly it away and still get a signal. I wouldn't suggest that, but it's good to know that you have it, and it will mean that if you're closer than that, you're probably gonna get a really clear image. Now, if you purchase the Phantom 4 Pro Plus version two, you get this controller with a built-in 5.5 inch diagonal, super bright screen. I have to say, this was the first controller I used that was like this before using the DJI Smart Controller, and I fell in love with it. Again, I love the idea of not having to tie it to my phone each time and tie up my phone doing things. And this dedicated controller is specifically integrated so that everything works seamlessly, has a bunch of ports on the back for different things like an HDMI out, USB, uh, card slot. So if you want to record in the controller, you can do that. Just very well built as you know, DJI controllers are meant to be. Um, but the screen only comes if you get the Phantom 4 Pro Plus version two. It does also use the DJI GO 4 app, just like uh, some of the others I've mentioned, which is great. So if you're familiar with the DJI GO 4 app, you can fly multiple drones. And it does do active track, as well as something called tap fly, where you can tap on the screen and it'll fly in that direction. So if you don't wanna have to worry about uh, getting it from point A to point B manually, you can literally tap and you can worry about what the shot looks like. It has something called draw mode, where you can draw a route that it will follow. And then it does have gesture mode, 
which allows you to actually control it using your hand if you're doing selfies or something like that. So the DJI Phantom 4 Pro version 2 is the drone that I feel like moves clearly out of the hobbyist realm into the professional realm. It doesn't mean you have to be a professional to use it, it just means that if you prioritize high quality image capture over portability, because it's not as portable, then it might be the drone for you. It can handle fast moving subjects because of its mechanical shutter and low light conditions because of its one inch sensor. If professional drone photography and video is something you plan to do, the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 is a serious contender and one that you should definitely check out. So that's it. There's my overview of the 2020 DJI lineup of consumer drones that I have flown and recommend highly. Uh, like I said, if you are looking to get into drone flying for the first time and want to share pictures and images on and video on social media, the Mavic Mini is a great choice due to its ease of use and price. If you're looking to do something a little more adventurous with a little more rugged drone that can shoot 4K and has a few extra features, I think the Mavic Air is a great choice. If you want to take it to the next level as far as cinematography goes with a lot more features and kind of get into the professional realm a bit more, the Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom are both fantastic choices. As I said before, they're my go-tos uh, for the most part for shooting video, whereas the Air is more my go-to for taking with me. And finally, if you're wanting to get serious about aerial videography and photography the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 is a great choice and has a ton of new features that weren't available in previous versions of the Phantom. I hope you found this video helpful and useful. If you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about drones and all kinds of RC stuff, please consider subscribing to Ready Set Drone. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Right, right, right.